Welcome to Second Opinion, the reviews show here on the Nexus. I'm your host, Ian R. Buck, and today I will be joined by Ryan Rampersett, who will be sharing his experiences with the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO40. Before we start the review, I would like to acknowledge that it has been a minute since we had our last episode. Uh, this is supposed to be a fortnightly show, and it's uh, since, since the last episode of this show, my monthly show has come out with two episodes. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been kind of neglecting second opinion, uh, unfortunately, because we suddenly had the end of the quarter and then uh, spring break and then I had to grade a bunch of stuff and yada yada and uh, robotics competition, something, something. So, uh, but now we're back in the saddle, so should be coming out with uh, new episodes every two weeks from now on until something else comes up in my life, you know. I do think it's rather funny that... Um, getting a concussion being in a, you know, a terrible car accident didn't make me miss any episodes of either show. And yet, like, getting to the end of a quarter, which is totally normal, you know, in a school year, made, it's, me, it's made me miss. <laughs> personal obligation versus external obligation. So we're not ta- here to talk about that. We're here to talk about the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus. That's right. Yeah. From Samsung. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So, Ryan, you are coming off of the S8 Plus. That's right. Yeah. It- and before that, the Pixel 1. Yes. And before that, I have no idea. But ne- a bunch of phones. Like ne- I have a, Nexus. Is, you I have a Nexus history. 6P, definitely. I did. Yes. Uh, so... Tell me about uh, tell me about this new phone. Great. So I will tell you about the Galaxy S9 Plus by Samsung. And registered so, trademark. <laughs> yeah, registered trademark TM copyright 2015. Uh, so this phone is um, pretty new. I think it came out in February or March or so, something like that. Uh, so there was an announcement, and then it came out basically three weeks later. Um, and unlike last year, this phone had a, a, a different launch pattern. Mm-hmm. So the S8 yeah, cause series Yeah, because last year you launched... had to wait until the summer to like get the unlocked version, right? Right. So the S8 launched in April, I think. And then the f- initial launch was like carrier only, and then only carriers had it. And then the next wave was retailers would have it like Costco and Best Buy and Target. Mm-hmm. And then the next launch was unlocked, and then that was only through Samsung. And then the next launch was retailers would have it, and then it would be available. So I think I had to wait until May, late May, to get the phone last year. This year, the phone that was available first was the official unlocked version from Samsung directly. That is fantastic. So I don't know if the carriers didn't want to pay the extra $5 or if Samsung said, no, you know what, we're not doing that again. Or maybe, um, you know, this is kind of like that TikTok pattern where it's carrier year versus not carrier year. I mean, does Samsung have a history of doing that? Yeah, kind of. So, like, oh. the 6 and 7 were pretty similar. The 8 and 9 are pretty similar. So, presumably, okay. next year will be the carrier year when all the people on the S8 will be upgrading to the S10, and they'll all be freaking out. Okay. And, then, and then they can con more people in renewing their carrier contracts. <laughs> but enough of, the, enough of the history. It's time to talk about the phone. Uh, let's talk about pricing and models first. Yeah. Uh, there are four colors. You may only buy the black one. <laughs> there, there is no other choice. That, that's that's Ryan's rules. That's Ryan's that's, rules. There we go. Um, so the model I purchased was eight thirty nine ninety nine. So a lovely high price of almost the same as the large Pixel two or you know two XL. I guess so. Pretty close. Yeah. Um, so before this launch, there were big rumors about them increasing the price closer to a thousand dollars. Um. It's good that they didn't, because that would have not only encroached on the Note line, mm-hmm. it would have made these phones, which are great, harder to say that they are great. Yeah. Uh, as you as you creep up above this price, you start wondering, where is that extra money going? And you could not find it. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can actually get these cheaper than this $839 price, frequently at retailers, even unlocked, um, such as Best Buy um, and others. Like, if you have a Costco or Sam's Club membership, you mm-hmm. can usually get these things cheaper okay so oh and also there are frequent deals with carriers if that's something you're into um so you can actually you can buy it it's it's possible 840 dollars is a funny number 
You know, it's so close to 50, a nice, you know, yeah. right there in the middle of the hundo, but like... I feel like it's there to make it look cheaper than it really is. Okay. I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. I don't... I can't think of another reason why, really. 800 plus and dollars I, is still... That's I, a lot of money for a phone, man. And I think the smaller version, so the regular S9, I think, yeah. that's, I think that's 729. Okay. So another strange number. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, of course, we have to talk about the display on this phone. Um... It's a 6.2 inch display. Mm-hmm. Um, massive. It sounds massive, but when you look at it, you think, "Wow, I can never go back." And so, is this kind of the same, like 18 by 18.5, 18.5 to by nine. nine? Yeah, it's a wonderful aspect ratio. Uh, nobody should ever, ever, ever deviate from this pattern ever again. <laughs> this, this is perfect, and the reason it's perfect in this particular generation of Android. Is because this bottom bar, even though these aren't physical buttons, they're always there, basically. Mm-hmm. And by having that 0.5 extra space, you get an actual 18 by 9 usable space. Mm, okay. Effectively. Mm-hmm. So that's cool. Um, this is probably the best looking screen anybody's ever seen in their life. Does it, Is it a significant step up from the S8? Or is um, it about the same? I don't think it's different, really. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Same, pretty much the same size. Is it same same resolution? So, yeah, it's the same resolution. Um, the density might be slightly different because I think the phone dimensions changed a okay. little bit. You know, somehow. Sure. I don't know. Um, because I think the previous S8 Plus was six point one, and this is six point two inches. Mm-hmm. That point one inch is a big deal. And this, of course, is a like super AMOLED. Yep. Whatever um, display. And this is one of those pen uh, pentile displays mm-hmm. where there's two twice as many green dots as other color dots or something. Yeah. I don't know, and I don't care. It you can't tell, and it doesn't matter. Now that's a that's a debate that goes all the way back to like 2012. Oh yeah, it's yeah. gonna go all the way until they stop that. Um, <laughs> but this is it's 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 either as good or better than the iPhone 10 screen uh it's a great screen yeah they've they've pretty much kind of as soon as the s8 came out you know that became kind of the standard of like this is how you make a A modern a modern looking phone yeah Yeah. so this phone uh just like the rest of the current generation of samsung phones has have has these curves on the side Mm -hmm. so the screen wraps around so i'm showing ian the phone on profile Mm -hmm. and you can see the screen doing stuff kind of at the edge there a little bit yeah i can see kind of the the wallpaper yeah, behind wrapping everything around wrapping a, around a little bit mm-hmm. so and i and it's hard for me since i don't have the s8 right here on hand to compare with but the the edges have are actually a little bit different this year hmm. um i'm gonna say they're steeper but i think the reviewers say they're less steep so i don't know if that means my definition of steep is different or not but they're different so like can we can we define this by the radius of the curve? Maybe I don't I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea what it means. I don't understand. It doesn't it doesn't really matter in your day to day usage. Mm-hmm. I think what people would say is that the previous generation had the um, screen going more to the side. Mm-hmm. So in this in this S nine, there's this kind of metal band here. I can hand you the phone. There's this metal band that goes around the oh, device. I see. Yeah. And I don't, that metal band wasn't there last year. And I think that makes it nice and grippy without uh, a case on. For sure. Yeah. And that metal band um, before was kind of just where the screen would end. Mm -hmm. So there's less glass on the side. And maybe that's why the steepness is different, in my opinion, than it was before. So again, I'm I'm not exactly sure how to describe that difference. But visually, they look very similar. And when you use them, of course, they're also very similar. So one thing that I remember about like pretty much every single electronic device that I've ever used is like how they feel when you run your fingers around the Mm. edge of them. And this has such a distinct feel like I man, I would remember this for a long time. Yeah, I like this. It's really weird. You know, and you wouldn't think that this random metal band. I mean, most phones have a metal band running around them now, I suppose. Um, And this one is really quite quite different now. Mm The phone that has the best metal band, in my opinion, is the 6P. Okay, yeah. That that was just, it was basically jewelry in a phone. Like, that was it was just amazing. Yeah, and, um, and that visor was pretty, 
pretty striking. That's for sure. Well. Yeah. So we'll we'll talk about this one's this visor in a little bit. So I'll mention that the display um can get really bright. It can work underwater, sort of. Okay. Like you can you can ha- use it totally wet. You can use it even under shallow water. Mm-hmm. Um, like it the phone's display and interaction interaction is perfect. Like there's no issues. Um. You you can't ask for more than this. Thanks. Also, since it is AMOLED and you know OLED based, you can do this amazing always on display mm-hmm. feature in you know ambient mode. And what's cool about that is you can touch the phone and do all sorts of stuff to it, but it won't wake up unless you hit the power button or you long press the home button. Oh, okay. Um, and it's really great. I I um cannot go to a phone again without always on display. Agreed. Yeah, yeah. I do really like having that. Um, so let's talk about the internals, like the RAM and the CPU. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk about Snapdragon. All right. 845. I've lost track of their numbering system. So have I. So have they. Um, there's almost no noticeable difference, in my opinion, between mm-hmm. this 845 and last year's 835. Okay. I couldn't tell you what the difference is. Like, there's no difference. It's not any faster. It's not any slower. It's the same. Yeah. I, it's not saving any more battery versus what's losing all of the battery. Mm-hmm. It's the same. Okay. But the difference this year is the six gigabytes of RAM that this phone has. Versus, what did the, it have, four last the year? four, I believe, last year. Oh, right. Because there was, there was a six gigabyte version of the S8. But, but limited that locations. Was, but that was only like the exynos version mm-hmm. right which was non-us and Korea only yeah 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 so patents or something well that was just because they wanted to have a market differentiator in that region that's so goofy cool um so the six gigabytes helps apps stay in memory longer mm-hmm. which makes the phone just feel faster overall yeah it's not really a big deal for me because i use the same five apps all day long so it's <laughs> twitter slack Okay, that's it. <laughs> so, yeah, for for me in the past, like, the thing that, that always made my phones feel really old was, like, oh, man, I just, I need to navigate with Google Maps and, like, play some music at the same time. And, like, the Nexus 5 just couldn't handle that after a while. Yeah. And, you know, and, and so I think having that extra RAM is a huge step for allowing that to happen. And so I think it's becoming more necessary to have at least three gigabytes of RAM now. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because, for example, the Google Nav, when, you know, in Google Maps, in Nav mode, when you hit the home button to go back to your home screen and go to some other app, it will do picture in picture. Is that what it's called? Yep, that's what it's called. And that means the full app is still running, Mm -hmm. but you have another app's worth of stuff also running, Mm -hmm. which means you basically have two 500 meg apps running side by side, not to mention all the other garbage running on the phone in general and when you do uh side by side split screen you know yeah two apps that's the same kind of thing right so i think it's and and i think it's really important to be able to do those use cases now because google's making them more useful and more like it's accidental that you happen to like a normal user is never going to go out of their way to turn on a toggle to get screen side by side well side by side but it's intentional that Google made picture in picture for maps mm-hmm. be that way. Mm-hmm. Nobody would turn that on by default. Nobody would know to. Nobody would even know that's a feature. They right. would just live with the fact that. But the, it, it just happens when you hit the home button. It just so, is there. there and, and so if if the phone couldn't handle using apps at that point, that would be bad. Mm-hmm. And so it's good that they have this now. Yep. So it has sixty four gigs of storage. Um. Is that the only size option? Incidentally, yes. Huh. There are rumors huh. of Samsung adding 128 gig and 256 gig sometime, but those rumors are not really like credible, and who cares, and who would afford that, and who would buy those? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. But what's cool is you can put an SD card in it, and mm-hmm. it'll work. Yeah, they... um. Like the the things that Samsung was Samsung enthusiasts really liked about it 
for a long time was like SD card, expandable storage, removable battery, you know, great camera. Right. So we don't have and the removable we don't, battery. We, yeah, we haven't had that for several years. I recently bought uh, an old S6 uh, expecting to be able to just replace the battery and, no. you know, give it to my sister. No, that one's sealed up. Mm. Um, so, like, on one hand, to be honest, so this phone has a glass back. Mm hmm. Um, it feels I, nice. It feels great. Uh, it's kind of slippery, but it it feels like a nice quality. Yeah, and I, and I feel like that aforementioned metal band around the sides does a lot to make it feel not too slippery. Yeah, you know? it helps at least. Yeah. Um, so when I actually bought this phone, I could not stand the metal band. But after a couple weeks, it's like, wow, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's talk about the battery. Okay. So... My usage patterns over the last year between the S8 and the S9 have been very consistent. Mm -hmm. I go to work every day during the week, mm -hmm. except on Fridays, usually. Um, and during the normal work day, I go about 40 minutes each way. I use navigation the whole time. Mm -hmm. So, and I, you know, I check the same amount of email and the same hip chat and the same Slack messages, and I tweet about the same amount. It's very consistent. Mm -hmm. It's a well-oiled machine. But don't pour oil on your machine. That's bad. Sure. So, I think this phone's a bit worse than the S8. Okay. So, I... um, It's hard to say where that comes from. So, you know, I can I can get home from, from my commute at 8. I can get back home at about 5 or so. And I can be between 60 and 40%. It's weird that I can have such a big range... But it's true. Like mm -hmm. something happens where some days the battery will just say, nope, not home right now. And other days it'll be totally fine. I'll leave the building with 70% suddenly. Have you been able to identify like through battery plus no, whatever? Nothing. No. I've tried every method known to man. And I, I can tell you nothing statistically relevant on why this seems to happen. Um, and then I can get I can get home and you know in that sixty to forty percent range, and then I can keep using it down until I go to sleep around uh, midnight at, mm -hmm. at twenty five to fifteen percent, and that's fine with me. I don't have to charge it all through the day. Mm -hmm. So you know it's not it's still not meeting the criteria of the two days worth charge kind of thing, right. the dream, but it's okay. Yeah. Now on Reddit on the S nine Reddit mm -hmm. subreddit thing. People are reporting eight hours of screen on time, and that's... That seems like a lot. <laughs> and that's impossible. But then others are reporting, like, three hours of screen on time maximum, and that's not possible either, <laughs> because either they're doing something wrong or the phone's doing something wrong. There's no in-between here. Um, so I don't know. There's there's something, some weird kind of fluctuation with this battery for my personal use, because it's just so wide and varied. And I think there is some, maybe a little bit of strangeness with the batteries just in this batch, just mm. just overall. Um, I always thought the S8 Plus was over over provisioned. What does that mean? So I it reported itself as a 3400 mAh battery. Mm -hmm. I always thought it was bigger than that. Okay, and they just told everybody it was smaller hmm. because they wanted to make super duper sure that, and not it's not like hundreds of. MAH is bigger, mm -hmm. like just tens, like so. It's thirty, okay. thirty four hundred and sixty. Okay. So they would have some room to degrade without looking like it was degrading. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, and I always thought they did this so that they could make it look better after the note exploded the year prior. Um, so the S eight, when I stopped using it back, whenever I got this in March, mm -hmm. um, it had uh, the the battery app that we use is called what. AccuBattery? Yes. Yeah. That sounds right. Um, AccuBattery reported that the phone had 95% um, capacity. Mm -hmm. The S9 Plus is already at 95% capacity. In fact, it arrived at 95% capacity. Mm. And I don't know. I thought it was odd, but, you know, I, I don't know. Like, I remember for sure that the S8 arrived at 100%. Actually, it arrived at 102%, but don't tell anybody. So I again I don't know what that means. I I don't know if the battery is really different or if the software reports are different or who knows what. Like it could be anything. Um cool though. Cool for the S8. Cool. Yeah. Just in general. <laughs> uh let's talk about ports. Yeah. 
Everybody likes good port. How about an audio headphone jack port? I wish I had one. Oh, hey. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we have one of those here. I don't use it much, but it I have it. You want to trade ports? I don't think that's how it works. <laughs> Darn. Yeah. Uh, we also have USB-C. This USB-C can also output to a screen through HDMI. That's really nice. That's really good. I wish I had that too. Can we trade? Uh, you can purchase a Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus from your local retailer. <sighs> yeah. Um, so charging. Uh, USB-C, quick charging, uh, very, not very exciting. I almost never use it. How? What do you mean you know, almost never use it? Doesn't the charger that came in the I box never use with that. it... What do you use? I charge once a day, overnight, Uh huh. with a slow charger, intentionally. Okay. Yeah, that's it. You're a weird one. No, no, no. It's bi- battery optimization. How does the charging with the slow one help you? So it, it, it doesn't get as hot, which damages the battery less. Okay. I guess. Okay. That's what I've heard. I mean, you're still, yeah, you're still bringing it up to 100%, which is, you know, yeah, the same thing. Maybe. Yeah, but, maybe. Not uh, less bad. Maybe maybe temperature makes a uh, difference. I don't know. So I, I occasionally use the wireless charging. Mm-hmm. It's not something that I have much need for because the battery lasts me throughout the day, but... But at least Samsung has been very consistent with... With having it. having yeah wireless charging available and this phone has all of the right parts for it so it's back as glass mm-hmm. it doesn't have a bunch of metal all over it so that it won't freak out and explode right, right. Um, well maybe it will i don't know it's samsung yeah so charging is not a big deal and and i i don't think you'll be uh too hard pressed to figure that out right buttons okay so there's pros and cons of the buttons so the big sweet button's still around Mm -hmm. aren't we all sad yeah i got really confused when i picked up the phone and and you know there's the power button over on the right hand side and then i was like okay here's a a, i I initially thought that it was a volume up button and a volume down button yeah but then i realized that the one above was twice as long and i'm like oh wait no that's a volume rocker what's this other button so i just put my phone back in the case yeah i put it upside upside down down. (laughs) And then it didn't like that I was holding the power button, so it restarted. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Um, so the, the 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 Bixby button is still here, and it still is useless. Mm-hmm. I did set up Bixby this year, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, there's no purpose for this button. Yeah. Just, you would just say, hey, Bixby, and it would just say, hey, how can I help you? There's not, no, no point to have a button, really. Mm-hmm. Um, so your phone has the squeeze feature, right? Yep. yep. That would have been better. I agree. Because then you wouldn't accidentally hit it when you were looking for the volume rocker. Yeah, yeah. It's much it, like if I don't care about the Google Assistant on my Pixel 2, I could just never, ever squeeze it. You know, I could set it to be you have to squeeze it so hard that I'd never activate that yeah. by accident. Yeah. So, OK, so that's that's the the con that everybody talks about. But the real con this year is a kind of like a double con because it was the same last year, but in a different way. So last year. The S8 and the S8 Plus had mm-hmm. this annoying fingerprint sensor mm-hmm. to the right of the camera. Yeah. And so then you would try to put your finger on the sensor, and then you'd miss, and you'd put it on the camera, getting the camera all smudgy. Yep. Okay, so that's cool. But this year on the S9 Plus, the sensor's below the camera. Very good. But I have weird hands. Okay. And so I want to put you have, my okay. finger... You have no idea how much I love... Like listening to, reading phone reviews, and just finding out information about people's hands that I never ever needed to know. I'm so glad. <laughs> so, uh, so my hands, my finger lines up with the bottom camera. Okay. In in just indefinitely. Can I every try every single that? time? Please do. Without dropping it, maybe. Eh. It works out pretty well for me if I if I'm holding the phone with like the bottom yeah. corner of the phone resting mm-hmm. on my palm. Uh, my finger, like, pretty naturally goes to where the fingerprint sensor is. If I'm holding it where my like my thumb can touch the the power button, then my finger's way way farther too high. up. Yeah. yeah, but I I wouldn't be holding it like that. I would definitely be holding it. Yeah, like the like with with the bottom corner of the screen by my palm. Right. Yep. So the button is in a better place now. The fingerprint sensor, but it's not. It's not good enough because it's still too easy to overreach mm-hmm. and hit the camera. Okay. It's still, there's no, there's no like, it's not indented enough. It's not, uh, there's no like little bump so that you know mm-hmm. that you overshot the camera mm-hmm. a little bit too much. Not to mention, it's a weird rectangle and not a circle. Okay. What is going on here? 
Are you saying that your fingers are not rectangular? Okay, they're rectangular going the other direction. <laughs> Vertical rectangle, not a horizontal <sighs> rectangle. Yep. I I don't understand what happened in this design meeting. Like, uh, just put it some just put a shape like, I don't know, a rectangle, triangle, no, rectangle it is. Or is this is this one of those rounded rectangles that we call a squircle? No, it's a rounded rect. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Um, so yeah, buttons, buttons are good, but man, it, it still did suck that it happened to be so similar to the camera that's right above it. Yeah. Just too easy to press. Yeah. So finally in, in the physicals category, I'll mention the weight. So this phone got a little bit heavier for some reason. I think it was this metal band mm-hmm. that we all like so much. Um, and so when I got it, my wrists were just so sore for like weeks. <laughs> You need to do those reps, you know, I, I, lifting uh, exercises uh, with you. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So if you if you're used to a really light phone, you mm-hmm. might need to hold this one for many hours a day to figure out if it's heavier or not. I think it is. Yeah, it's definitely heavier than my Pixel Two. Yeah. But I also have the regular size Pixel Two, not right. the, not the XL. Yep. Yep. So let's talk about the camera. Mm-hmm. So how is it? It is either the same or just marginally better as the S8 Plus. Okay. And it's... But it's got that special new variable size aperture, which is super exciting. That's three bullets down. Hold on. Oh, okay. Sorry. So it's... it's. I can't tell you if there's any actual physical difference. Like with the pictures that I take, mm-hmm. it's of a dog and a cat almost every day. Like there's no difference. Yeah. They look the same. Have the same kind of Samsung oversaturated color, you know. No, they just look it's, fine. Yeah. Well, yeah. but I mean, like if they look the same as the Samsung S8, you they know, did, then, they just then look the same. There's no difference. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, so there are some special modes with this phone. Okay. AI emoji. Um, so when I was setting up the phone in the car, mm-hmm. uh, cause you know, I'm not going to leave the Best Buy parking lot. <laughs> well, I guess like, I, I guess I'm surprised you left the counter of like the checkout area before you, uh, <laughs> set up the darn phone. Um, well, so this, um, so in the S8, when I was in the car, there was like, I didn't, I didn't know what I was doing. So I was just exploring the whole time. Mm-hmm. But this year, because I knew where all the settings were, mm-hmm. more or less, I could immediately go in and turn all, all the garbage off I didn't want. Um, so I turned off AR emoji immediately. Mm-hmm. Um, and this this mode allows you to have this weird little animated face thing. Okay. Kind of like one of those Nintendo Wii, me. Oh, yeah, the me is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, but just by Samsung instead of my bad Nintendo. Mm-hmm. Um, I turned that off. It's gone. So how is this related to the camera? It looks what? at you, and then it moves the little person. Okay. And I turned it off. So the button's no longer in the camera app. You don't need to see it or think about it or even know about it. It's so, gone. So it's kind of a weird combination of, like, me's and the... A, what, the animoji? Animoji, yeah, yeah, that's what it was called. It's exactly like that, mm-hmm. but worse. Okay. Um... There's also a couple of slow motion modes, and oh, Samsung yeah. made a huge deal. In fact, every person, every reviewer made a huge deal about this useless feature. Okay, and we'll talk about why it's a useless feature in a moment. I think I know why you think it's a useless feature, Go because on. you don't have a dog that moves fast. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, you'll you'll know more why in a moment. It's just a waste of time, and it's not very useful. It doesn't help you get anything really Mm -hmm. um it may be the medium slow mode would be okay Mm -hmm. so there's super slow mo super slow mo slooper slooper (laughs) i don't know maybe the just plain slow motion mode would be okay Mm -hmm. um but the super mode is not very useful now there are some notable features um so you mentioned this variable aperture thing yes I've never figured out how to engage it or if it's ever mattered in any picture I've ever taken. <laughs> ever. Because as as somebody who does photography with a DSLR typically, I was very, very excited to find out that we finally have a cell phone out there that has a variable size aperture, even if it's only two, you know, fixed yeah. size. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm not going to get into, like, what like what advantages having a variable size aperture is but like 
I can understand. Like, I, I'm really, really curious. I want to. I want to play around with your phone now. <laughs> I want to play you around. May, with you the may camera. do so. Yeah. Um. But, but we need like different lighting conditions and everything. Well, you can go really into pro mode and toggle it somehow. Mm-hmm. So the, the so the the aperture changing mode thing is not something that's relevant or even needed. Uh, it's cool, but it was a gimmick, and they could do it. Maybe it'll be more relevant in the future. Um, the more interesting camera feature is that this phone has two lenses, two camera modules, um, and you can switch between them. And one of them is a wide angle lens, which is super useful because, um, often you don't want just a person. You want a group of people or you want a kind of a landscape shot or you want a wider shot and you can get that by using this other lens mode and it's super cool that you can do that and and in fact um as of this recording i just used it to great effect uh recently on the uh or at uh, javascript minnesota to get a wide angle shot of the stage and the prompter thing. yeah and yeah. does the s9 regular size have two cameras or is it, it just only the has plus? one okay yeah, because when you when you started talking about that, I got confused because I was like, "Wait, I didn't think that this phone had two. This phone has two, but the little one doesn't. Maybe next year, we'll see." Um, so there are some oddities with this camera. So the camera's good, but I can't compare it to like one of these uh, new Pixel phones that everybody keeps talking about mm-hmm. because Google didn't make a good Pixel two. So I can't I can't review it versus a Pixel Two because they didn't make one that was good. What if I had one right here? But it's not good, so I can't try. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So that's too bad. I leave HDR on the auto mode, mm-hmm. so that that lets you get some better looking pictures. Um, you know, it increases the highlights and the shadows and all that stuff. But it's supposed to be on auto, so it's not supposed to do it if it thinks it can do it with a single shot without the HDR composition. But I think it always does, because I noticed that pretty much everything gets blurry. Um, whether it be a dog or a cat or a person moving ever so slightly, the camera seems to take forever to take a picture, and people and things just get blurry. Oh, that's a shame. That's a shame. It is a shame. Now, yeah. I can get some great shots of something that's not moving. Mm-hmm and it's fine or i can go into pro mode and deal with it myself and it's also fine Mm -hmm. but it's dumb that i can't just figure it out the i i was just playing around with the pro mode and i'm very impressed with all of the different options that they have in there like samsung made samsung made a good camera app there. it's pretty good yeah uh there there are some things about the camera app specifically that i guess we can talk about right now um it's very easy to accidentally go into another mode because you yeah. swipe left and right. Yeah. And it's obnoxious because I don't use these other modes except Pro. And I guess I could take them out of the menu, mm-hmm. but I haven't, and it's annoying me. Um, the other thing is if you swipe up and down, it'll go into selfie mode or not selfie mode. Okay. And that's obnoxious too. Um, some of my favorite features about the camera app is that you can toggle the near or far lens by clicking this button down here that's Uh pretty cool um you can also toggle when you're in video mode you can just take pictures by hitting the camera button. okay yep and you can even pause the recording of a video okay so you can start a video do Uh some stuff pause unpause keep going keep recording keep going and then stop so i assume that those when you take a picture while it's recording a video that that is at the resolution of the video itself not not at the full resolution of the sensor okay and then, of course, you can uh, go into 4K mode over here and, you know, you can do some of those uh, fancy things people like to do. I don't need to. I'm okay with just regular 1080p video. Now, let's see. That that Samsung camera app doesn't take, like, photospheres or anything like that. Is that correct? Um, it can do uh, a panorama and that's it. Okay. Um Because that was, that was one thing that we were talking about the other day was uh, you didn't think that the google camera yeah app is i thought it was anything. removed it, have you looked recently no to see? i have not let's let's go and do that right now so i've got cardboard camera open camera snapseed google translate camera for android but not google camera what is camera for android some fake app. oh somebody else okay hmm so yeah i i do believe that the um cardboard camera is kind of what they replaced that with 
Because, yeah, a cardboard camera lets you go and take sort of, like, they're, they're sort of photospheres, but they're meant for you to, like, experience them in the Google Cardboard, you know, VR experience. Right. And it, in addition to taking, like a like, a panorama all around you, it also records a little bit of, like, ambient sound, so you mm-hmm. can kind of, like immerse yourself in this you know photo that you're that you're taking a look at yeah yeah so it's uh that's fine it's not it's not too bad i never i mean i love doing this photos here stuff but if google would actually make a good phone again i would get back to it but they haven't and they won't so i guess i mean the, okay. the important part for the purposes of photospheres is that google made a couple of of phones with great cameras again so unfortunately that's... when you make this photosphere on those said phones you're unable to view them because you're looking at sandpaper so you know there's that my screen is just fine uh, it's not it's not the the plus one was the one with the problems okay i understand don't, but don't... i will attribute the problem to both you just refuse to look at my phone screen because it's got giant bezels have you seen the beauty that this <laughs> my galaxy s9 plus by samsung is it's beautiful <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about software because that's what everybody yells and complains and screams about. Mm -hmm. It's fine. There, I did it. So everybody complains about this thing called TouchWiz, and it's the... The and who why why did they call it TouchWiz? Like, that was their first mistake. Um, So the S9 Plus came with Oreo. Okay. Yep. Can you can you that, can you name a, like a notable feature that came with Oreo? Because like I can't remember. I don't need to off the top of my head right now because I did an entire hour long episode about Oreo on Second Opinion here all by myself. Now, what I call that in the industry is a redirection. But the point of this redirection was that it doesn't matter if your phone has what was the thing before Oreo, nougat. Nougat. It doesn't matter if your phone has nougat or pie or Oreo, or Pineapple, because there is no actual feature Treble. that Google ships. Treble. What is that again? That w- That's the abstraction uh, away from the drivers oh, you know, right. level. So, so the thing that customers don't care about. Right, okay. So See, the, that's the thing that customers should care but they about. Don't, that is the not, most important thing. It's not thing. a user land feature. It doesn't matter. There is almost nothing Google is shipping with any of these features anymore that users actually can immediately identify and remember that's important. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't matter. Not to mention, even if they did, it's very likely that uh, Google will have some kind of uh, shim support with the Play Store thing that they do. The Google oh. Google Apps Play thing. Right. What is that called? Play, Play services? services? Yeah, that. So TouchWiz is fine. It doesn't matter what version of Android you're on anymore. It turns out um, this TouchWiz is pretty good. So they took out a ton of the garbage... Um, you know, you still have, it's not stock flavor. It doesn't right. look like stock, right? but it doesn't have to because it's all white now, just like Android is, right? I guess. I mean, it, yeah. it doesn't, I mean, it looks different, but it's not noticeably different. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I do like having a dark background on my quick settings, but sure. that's, you know, a preference. No, oh, but just wait and in Pi, it's all going to change. Yeah, of course. Um, so the software because it has touch with support because it's all from Samsung Mm -hmm. has a ton more customization options. Um, and it, and I, and I noticed last year about how much customization there was, but since I turned everything off, it didn't matter this year. (laughs) I knew where to look. So it was faster to turn off, but while I was doing, so I played with each thing before I did it. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that this comes with is you can have a little sidebar dock thing and you can shove some apps in there. So I use this special launcher, um, which we'll talk about in a bit, that lets me have a sidebar. But if you wanted to have an always present little sidebar thing, and it's a secret little drawer that just sits in the edge of the screen, and it's semi-transparent all so the time. no matter what app you're in, you can pull over yeah. these little shortcuts? Yeah. Okay, nice. Um, unless it's like a video that takes full screen, like system like mm-hmm. a system full screen, and right. then, it, then it's summoned by the same way the nav bar buttons are summoned. Okay, by yeah. By swiping. Yeah. Um, it's just a super little cool thing, and you can shove apps in there and quick links and stuff Mm -hmm. so that's cool um you can customize the ambient display like very very customized you can you can even add colors to it which is kind of cool so it doesn't have to just be black and white okay um nice if you were using the stock launcher from samsung 
you can actually have colored like semi-colored backgrounds in ambient display mode mm-hmm. so you can have like a galaxy with little red and blue and oh. yellow and green dots it's kind of fun mm-hmm. um you can customize some i don't know what it's called but it's it's basically when your phone's sitting down in ambient display mode and you get a notification you can tell it what color to make a ring around your phone oh. and it's super cool and then if your phone's this way it'll it'll flash this way being screen down that's what i mean yes screen down um this quality audio content yeah that's right you can actually have it flash so at the edge of the table you can see red oh yeah right because you can see because you can see the edges of the display on this phone yeah yeah um and then there's a ton of other things you can customize you can customize um much more precisely your uh vibration motor settings okay um i bet you really like those settings um you can customize pretty much everything that you've ever wanted not that you should, but you can also customize your TouchWiz theme. Okay. So you mentioned that you like having the dark, mm-hmm. um, what is that called? The quick settings? Quick setting. You can yeah. have dark quick settings. Well, Samsung has this whole theme engine. Okay. Now, in order to change stuff like that, you actually have to use one of the themes that's in the marketplace. But right. there's a ton of free ones and you can buy some. And when you do that, uh, you download it and then it just applies system-wide and things go dark. It's super cool. So the... The, the customizability in this phone is off the chart uh, compared to one of those uh, stock Android Pixel phones. Right. So we'll talk about why that's interesting later, but I think it's TouchWiz is fine. You won't hate it that much, I think, if you actually gave it a try. Yeah. I and- think if you if you use TouchWiz for a year, you would forget about what is stock and what isn't. <laughs> And you like you can't even name a feature that's different between versions of Android that's user facing, that's relevant, and and so eventually you just forget about all of them because they don't matter anymore. Um, one other thing that you can customize and that I demand that you do so on this phone when you buy it, um, it ships with the back button on the um, app switcher oh, side. Yes, yeah, and it's criminal that Samsung does that. And so that'll be resolved in the future with Android P when they stop having those buttons. So problem solved, I guess. But it is insane that they do that. So you can actually go into the settings and switch that immediately. So please do that when you buy the phone. Okay, let's talk about updates. Mm-hmm. Um, the S8 Plus got... What is the current one? 8. eight Android what? 8. 8 what? Oreo. Well, yes. Uh, it got Android 8 Oreo this year... One month after this came out. So basically, oh oh, two weeks after I bought this phone, that phone got it. <laughs> uh, uh, so sad. Um, it'll probably never get Android 8.1. Mm-hmm. Samsung pretty much doesn't do the point upgrades. Mm-hmm. They'll do security patches and it's no problem. Sure. But they probably they just kind of skip the point ones and twos. Right. Like there are ever twos yeah. anymore. I noticed that about the, the S6 that I just bought was that the like it's on Android 7 but it has the security patch from like February of 2018. And I was like, huh? huh. Yeah. yeah. So they must maintain like a ton of different parallel branches somehow. Very strange. Yeah. yeah. So it will definitely get Android P next year, mm-hmm. but probably one month after the S10. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right, right. Oh, well. Um, I will mention that when it gets Android P, you won't know like, you won't know or care because there won't be any features in Android P that matter. So it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm looking at my review for, of Android 8 and there are some like consumer facing things, but they're the types of things that aren't like in your face. We'll talk you about know? that during the French. Yeah. Um, tune into the French. Um, so the updates don't usually do anything bad to your phone, but I will note that on the S8 plus I'm, I feel like the performance got worse with Oreo. Okay. But I didn't do a clean wipe, so that's mm. why I don't know for sure. Uh, the performance on this phone is 90% good. So, like, once in a while, there will be a stutter or an app crash or a lag or something that's like, eh, that's kind of sucky. It's not that bad, usually. You know, it's just, you know, software's hard to write. I get it. Mm-hmm. Um, to be honest, I think there were more blips on the S8 Plus 
when it got Oreo, this shipped with Oreo. I think it might be an Oreo thing. Like, okay. I don't know. So it's uh, final thoughts time. Yes. What a phone. Oh, my gosh. If Google could have released this phone, oh, my gosh. It would have been perfect. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can definitely see why Samsung has the largest market share of any, you know, well, Android it's funny because all of the things I talked about here today have nothing to do with why it's the biggest market share. The reason it's the biggest market share is because people go into the store and they were bought by Samsung. Right. Yeah. That's why their marketing is huge. Yes. Now Google could buy this phone from Samsung, charge $1,200 for it and do a worse job than they did Mm -hmm. because Google would put stock Android and they would lose so many of the customizable features that make this phone really useful for people Mm -hmm. who want those features. Mm. Um, And that's even more important for the Note line where the stylus is deeply integrated. So it's a, you know, people, people hate on Samsung for a lot of things, but this is a great phone. Yeah. Um, And at this price, it's a really good phone. Like you could buy an S10. I mean, an iPhone 10. That's what I mean. That's iPhone 10. You could buy that for a thousand dollars and you could still not enjoy some of the great quality of life. This phone brings to you. So if you have, uh, an S7 or a pixel one or an iPhone eight just lying around, just, uh, buy one of these phones and put it beside those. And, um, you know, just uh, take kind of a nice square look at those and say, which one of you is the newest, most modern looking one? And invariably, you will be saying that the S9 or S9 Plus is, in fact, the newest looking one because it is, but also because it looks really good. Mm-hmm. Um, the, S, the, the S7 looks ancient with its physical home button. Right. The Pixel 1 looks insane with its chins and foreheads. The Pixel 2 looks exactly the same because the the body of the Pixel 2 is basically the same as the Pixel 1. I didn't from list the, front, the anyway. Pixel 2 line because right. they don't exist. Google didn't actually make that. Um, and the iPhone You're 8... You're so rude, Ryan. <laughs> and the iPhone 8 is an abomination because its, it's, it's companion phone, the iPhone 10, mm. looks beautiful. But for some reason, Apple decided to make phones that intentionally look awful. Huh. Um, they will just look older. Like this phone just looks too good. Mm-hmm. It's 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 not jewelry class like the six P was, but it's pretty close. Uh, the price is pretty good. Uh, I would say that the price is pretty high. You the know, price is I'm, pretty good. It's this is a flagship phone mm-hmm. to buy the bad Pixel Two. I'm acknowledging it this time. Mm-hmm. The Pixel Two XL to buy that one, it would actually cost more, and you get nothing. Except a better camera, and you just get, you get a worse OS, right? Or you could buy the good Pixel two and only spend like six hundred dollars. Then you get a worse screen. And I say I say only because, and and which is weird because like, it it took a lot to convince me to bring myself up to the six hundred dollar range of phones. Like that is where I am used to flagship phones being. Yeah. And so bumping us up to the eight hundred dollar range is like, oh boy. Now I, I think if this phone was nine fifty, I wouldn't buy it. Mm-hmm. I mean I totally would, but I wouldn't yeah. like it. <laughs> um I think I paid close to nine fifty for my one hundred twenty eight gig Pixel one. Why did I do that? Because I yeah, because I did. Because I think they only sold a 32 and 128 version or something. Oh, okay. Right? I, I think don't so. remember. Yeah, I don't know. Google, man. So if you have an iPhone and you are feeling trapped, kind of lonely, um, depressed, and you want some customization in your life, this is the phone that you should buy. This will give you, and obviously that you want to try Android. Um, this will give you not only Android, it will give you way more customization. It'll feel like the the opposite of an iPhone. Um, if you have an iPhone and you want to change to Android, mm-hmm. but you don't care about customization and instead you, you care about something that's a little bit more sleek, something that's a little bit more similar to an iPhone's uh, uh, iOS kind of design pattern, then you should probably get a Pixel 2 or 2 XL, um, especially if you're a fond of looking at the iPhone 8 design style. Ugh. If you, if you if you like that, that you should just get a two or two XL. Um, and so finally, the the final thought is, 
This phone was remarkably similar to the S8 and S8 Plus. Mm -hmm. What will the S10 be like? Will it be a third leg of the TikTok cycle? So TikTok. Tack? Tack. I don't know. Uh, Or will it be an entirely new style of design um, that just keeps going down in this direction where the screen concaves on itself twice and becomes in the fourth dimension? (laughs) I mean, we just don't know. Um, and that I guess that'll be the question that we um, learn, you know, sometime next year, and that will be the the telling point to s- decide if Samsung has totally lost their minds or not. Maybe uh, maybe next year Samsung is going to come out with a phone that looks like you know those those phones from the Expanse where the uh, screen is all glass and you can see it from the other side as well. And... So when it, when you read the books, you don't mm-hmm. know about that. Um, but I will I will I, you know it's possible that the um, you know, the S10 is kind of like their big moment. You know, it's mm-hmm. the 10th one, I guess. Sure. It's possible that the line could fold. And they could just change it entirely and go with a different letter, like T. Oh, okay. T1. I, I don't guess. know. Or it was a subtle pun on the fact that there are rumors of the folding phone tech that they're uh, really, oh, trying, right, yeah. really trying to go for. I don't know if the joke was really going that way or not. But either way, this phone is either as good or better than the S8 that was before it. Mm -hmm. And we'll see if they can do it again for the third year. Sounds like there isn't much reason if you have an S8 to upgrade to the S9, though. Is that fair to say? If you have an S8 and you want to get an S9, think really carefully about if you really need a new phone right now. Mm -hmm. Just wait, I don't know, the eight months that it'll take to get us to the next year. Or the eight months that'll take us to get a good good pixel mm-hmm. then then decide if you really need a new phone right, uh, right. if you have an essay then it still works don't don't buy this okay nice yeah. mm-hmm. and if you are somebody who is switching from uh, ios over to like the s9 or something like that uh go ahead and listen to the extra dimension number 10 which was uh us talking a lot about android and all of the wonderful things that you can customize and change about it which is a yeah. lot mm-hmm. but on this phone it's even more oh yeah yeah. And this phone makes it like much more obvious the things that you can customize. Everything. Yeah. Yep. All right. Thanks for listening to this episode of Second Opinion, everybody. If you would like to give us feedback on this episode or suggest uh, further things for us to review, because uh, we, we can review anything that you can imagine almost. Uh, go ahead and contact us at the Nexus TV on Twitter or send us an, e- an email at the Nexus TV at gmail.com. Ryan, where can people find you on the internet? People can find me just about everywhere, but especially on the Twitter at Ryan Amar, and of course on my website, RyanRapperSaid.com. Fantastic. And I have been Ian Arbuck. You can find me on Twitter as Ian Arbuck uh, or links to other stuff that I make at IanArbuck.com. This episode of The Extra Dimension is released under a Creative Commons attribution license, so feel free to take any part of this and use it however you like, as long as you link back to thenexus.tv slash SO40. Have a good one, everybody. Have a good one. <laughs>